Okay, welcome back for another video. And in this video, I'll be showing you the data warehouse experience and the data warehouse within Microsoft Fabric. And there's quite a lot to get through within this experience. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, so once you've signed into Microsoft Fabric, this is gonna be your home screen that you land on here. If you use the experience selector to select data warehouse experience here, this is the view that you're gonna have, right? So at the top, we can see, as with all fabric experiences, we can quick create a warehouse here, or from a sample, or we can even do a data pipeline. And we've spoken a lot about data pipelines in the last few videos. So I'll leave a link to those if you wanna catch up with those. For the purposes of this video, we won't be using the data pipeline. I'm actually gonna be using create statements and insert statements to kind of get some some data into our data warehouse, just to show you a few few different ways of doing it. So let's get going and start creating this data warehouse. So the first thing you'll notice, I've just clicked on data warehouse there. We give it a name. So let's call this demo warehouse. And boom, it's as simple as that. You give it a name and it creates a warehouse. Now that's quite incredible. Because if you've worked in Azure and you've built perhaps a Azure Synapse implementation or an Azure SQL database or any sort of managed instance database, these all require quite a bit of configuration. You have to set up resource groups, have to set up security groups normally. You have to set up all these different things and tell it what sizing you want and scaling. And so what Microsoft have done, have basically completely removed all of that necessary startup time and effort and knowledge. Really anyone can create a data warehouse now, which I think is a really interesting step in terms of innovation within our companies, right? But also it comes with some risks because maybe we don't want every single person having the ability to create random data warehouses. So we need to think carefully about how we architect these solutions within, within companies. But anyway, our warehouse has now been built and this is what it looks like straight out the box. We have some schemas. Obviously we haven't got any tables in here yet, but it comes with the default the DBO schema. And you can see we've got some views or a folder for views. We haven't got any views in there yet. Functions and stored procedures. So our stored procedures, we looked at those in the previous video where we looked at triggering stored procedures from data pipelines. So this is where you're gonna be creating a stored procedure that you can run on a schedule. Now it's important to note that you don't have any sort of SQL agent type technology here. Also don't have that in Azure SQL either. So we need to make use of data pipeline if we want to do some sort of scheduling normally. This database is built on top of what's called the Polaris engine. And it's the same engine that Microsoft uses for Synapse uh, serverless SQL. So under the hood, it's not actually a SQL server. It's a SQL server like engine, basically built to be uh, distributed and fault tolerant and all these great things. Basically your data is stored in clusters rather than a server and pages that you might be used to if, if you've been using SQL server in the past. But there's a lot more to that. And I think I'm gonna save that for another video all about the Polaris engine. The most important point to know is that we can't use all of our SQL Server knowledge and T-SQL knowledge, you know, all of those scripts that we know and have used in the past on this engine. Now they're still kind of building out the functionality. Yeah, you can do the basic stuff. You can do create statements, insert statements, uh, some of those type things, some updates, not many update statements, but it's fully functional. You know, we can do most things in here. So let's see what we can do. Let's just do a quick tour. So I've just clicked on the settings here just to quickly see what we can do here. And obviously the name is here. The SQL connection string is really important. So we can use this to connect to our data warehouse from Power BI desktop. And also we can use it if we want to use external tools like SQL Server Management Studio or Azure Data Studio. These can be, well, you can use this SQL connection string to read into here and then you can do all of your management of your data warehouse within those sort of tools that you might be more familiar with. Okay, so if we click out of there, the get data 
obviously we've spoken about the data pipeline. That's the primary way of getting data into our, into our warehouse. Now we can create new SQL queries, either a blank query or from a bit of a template. It's just going to frame out a bit of template T SQL for us. And the schema, we can create schemas, tables, views, and store procedures. There we go. So that's kind of the main functionality at the top there. One interesting point to note here is that you can actually bring in other warehouses into your warehouse, kind of like a warehouse on warehouse experience. It's a bit like if you've used external tables perhaps in kind of the Azure SQL world, but it's not actually external. There's no uh, limitations to this. You can bring in two or three different other warehouses, and then you can create a view on top of those three warehouses. So that once you start to understand how this works, your brain goes a bit, a bit mental, thinking about all the different possibilities here. And I'll be showing you how to do that towards the end of the tutorial. But first, what I wanna do is I just wanna get some data in here, really. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is using T-SQL to create a few tables, and then we're gonna be inserting some data into them. And then I wanna create some views on that data, maybe bringing in some data from another data warehouse entirely. Let's go. Okay, so these are the create statements that we've got here. So all I'm doing is creating very simple, kind of like MVP type tables just to show how this works. This isn't necessarily a SQL tutorial or anything like that. It's just to give us a bit of data to play with and look at. So it's very simple, create statements. The structure here is quite interesting. I don't think that's actually necessary, but we've got the warehouse, then the schema, then the table name that we want to create. Obviously there's three columns in this table that I want to create and it's an employee table. So it's got an ID, employee ID their first name of that employee and the company that they work for. And second table is the company table. And in that table, we've got the company ID, the company name and the company address. So again, it's similar to, you know, any sort of SQL experience that you've worked in before, like SSMS, maybe SQL Server Management Studio. If you just highlight the text that you want to run and you click run, then it should be executed. And if we look in our schema here, open up our tables. Yeah, so there we go. So we have our company table and our employee table set up and ready to go. So let's go back to our script here. And this is quite an interesting point. So there I kind of navigated away from the table. And I haven't actually saved this script, but in the bottom here, you can see that the queries are saving automatically. So I haven't actually named it very well there. So perhaps I can give this a better name. Like, okay, so now we've got a bit more of a useful name. And in the future, that query will always be saved there. So I can come back to the data warehouse and I can look at the scripts that um, are gonna be that I've used to create these tables. Another interesting feature whilst we're on this topic is shared queries. So obviously I can move this query to shared queries like so, and that will enable other people with access to this data warehouse to see that query as well. In my queries, it's only queries that I've created. I can't see perhaps my colleague's query uh, their random query, their scripts that they've that they've been working on until it goes to that shared query state. Now, what would also be nice, and I think Microsoft are working on this, is to build an integration with Git, similarly to how they have done with Power BI files. And I think that's on the roadmap. And it'd be really good to kind of push your T SQL scripts to, you know, via Azure DevOps through to some sort of Git repository, GitHub, just to manage that version control. One thing, if you've used DBT, for example, they do this really well. Um, it's kind of a data transformation, data modeling tool, and all of the scripts are resting on, in version control in GitHub. So that's really helpful, that integration there. So hopefully we see that in the future. So 
We've got our query, we've got some tables now. Then what I've done is just the most basic data just to get, get us something to get going here. So I'm just gonna insert some data into the employee table, three records. Again, I've also got some data to put into the company table. So if I just select that and run that. Okay, so it looks like that has successfully run. Now what I can do is I can right click on any table and create a new query, SQL query, select top 100. And this just gives you a shape, an idea of the shape of the data. So yep, yeah, we can see that our three records for the company table has now been written into the table, which is wonderful. And whilst we're here, we can also do select star from dbo.employee. So now we also have data in our employee table. Now, one thing that I would just note here that I've noticed is that the SQL scripts are case sensitive. So in a traditional SQL database, you know, you can write this dbo.employee in capital letters and yeah, that would be absolutely fine. Do what you want. But here that is actually not going to be as an invalid object name. So it doesn't recognize employee if it's not exactly the same case as how we declared it in our create statement. So that's something to bear in mind there. So let's just have a look at that. Yep, yeah, lovely. So if I wanted to, uh, let's say, left join this now with our companies table. And so let's just bring through a few different things here. CO dot. So I want everything from the employee table and then I want the company address. Okay, so again, we can just copy that and select everything, select run. And here we have our results already. So yeah, that looks good. We've got our three employees and we've merged it with the company table, joined it, let's say. And what we've got returned is some of the columns from the employee table joined with some of the columns from the company table. So perhaps now we want to do a create view. Okay, so then if we run this and a view, if you're not familiar with, with views, if you're maybe coming from a Power BI world, it's a view on our tables. So what we can do is create a view of some sort of transformation normally. Normally you're bringing together a few different tables, maybe you're doing some calculations, some group buys. Your view is just a definition of that transformation. And what's gonna happen is within your Power BI, you can call this view. You can say, get me this view, these transformations, and the database is then gonna go and look at the code in that view statement and work it out on the fly. The view does not actually store any new data. It's just a pointer to the transformations on the existing data. So here's our view that we just created there. And again, we can do a select top 100. There we go. So now this view becomes available to us. We can create a Power BI report. We can hook straight into our data warehouse and we can read this view without having to do that transformation logic, those joining stuff in Power BI. And this is really useful. Creating views on your data based on your kind of business logic is really the bread and butter of data warehousing and data warehouses. So that's kind of like the core functionality. Obviously you can enrich these with functions. I'm not gonna show any functions here and store procedures as well is if you have that kind of encapsulated logic that you want to write into a stored procedure, like we mentioned in the last video, they can be scheduled. So maybe every day you want to run some sort of summary statistics or every hour you want to, or every time this database table gets triggered, then you can use store procedures to, to kind of trigger on those events. The one thing I wanted to add to this was another warehouse just to demo that capability there. So if I click on warehouses, here I've already created another warehouse. Well, actually I've got loads, but within your same workspace, you can bring in another warehouse. 
And I'm going to bring in second warehouse, creatively named. And so this was our first one that we've been working in, demo warehouse. Now we've got second warehouse. So you can kind of bring in these different layers and from a data warehouse, from a fabric point of view, they don't really care because all of your data is in one leg, right? So as long as you can bring in tables and, you know, it has to be in the same workspace, I believe, but you can bring in, you know, multiple warehouses on top of each other and create a query. So in the second warehouse, I've got another table and it's called external employees. So it's a similar structure. It's got a company ID, an employee ID, and a first name of the employee. Okay, so here I am. I've brought in this very simple script with my employee table. And so just checking that running, that's running. So what I want to do is in fact, union these with our external employees. So what I've done here, just to check that these are all lined up, we've got employee ID, first name, and company ID from our external. Now the union is basically gonna append one on top of the other and remove any duplicates if there are any. Okay, so let's give this a go. So that's worked successfully. Now we have six rows, our external employees and our employees. I'm just gonna add in this column here that tells you where it's come from. Okay, so then that might be useful because we know which employee now comes from which table. And that might be useful for your Power BI, for example, or visualization. And perhaps we want to create a view of this, create view, maybe call it all employees as this. Run that, just refresh our views. And there we go. That's our all employees. So there you go. That was a very short whistle stop tour of the data warehouse. And obviously there's lots more to unpack. You can do lots of things with SQL. I haven't gone into the full depths of SQL and what you can and can't do in, in this video. There will definitely be more videos coming in the future. So if that's something you want to learn more about, then make sure you subscribed, leave me a comment, like this video, do all of those good stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.